tonight's speaker. Tonight's speaker is Francis Castro, who's going to talk about nature recovery in London. Francis is a very experienced and well-respected ecologist, and we first got to know him um, as the LNHS through his wonderful work at Hainault Forest. He now works for the Greater London Authority as London Nature Recovery Officer, so he's very well placed to talk to us about nature recovery in London. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and hand over to you, Francis. Thank you, Maria, and thanks for the great introduction. I, I like that. Well respected. I hope so. Um, but that was that was yeah, very uh, very appreciate that. Um, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to share my screen now. Hopefully, this will get to um, kind of the slide deck that I'm looking to use for today. Let's see if I've got the right one there. Let's go for it. Right. Okay, guys, can you see the um, see the presentation yeah. screen? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, thank you. Uh, looking at the attendance list, there's a lot of people here today. So thank you very much for um, wanting to kind of come along and see this presentation. I hope that you'll find it interesting and it illuminates the um, the whole kind of concept behind um, kind of nature recovery, as well as, you, you know, kind of look, I mean, I, I, I love to start off with a bit of a story to come off uh, to, to start with with these types of talks in terms of the journey that have, in terms of how we've got here so um a little bit of the background in in terms of you know kind of how things have kind of progressed in london and uh, where we are at now at the moment so as uh let me uh kind of move forward to the next so so um thanks for the intro i have done a bit of an intro of myself as well on here um hope you don't mind so uh, yes, my name is Francis Castro. I'm sure most of you know, a uh, local authority ecologist and land manager. So I've been um, kind of working with the London Bar of Redbridge uh, and, and uh, kind of within their kind of leisure services and, and then leisure trust vision RCL um, kind of for the past, well, kind of almost 18 years, to be quite honest. So I joined um, kind of I joined Redbridge uh, back in must have been 2005. It's one of you know kind of my first kind of proper job within the ecology sector, and uh, yeah, I stayed there for all that time, and it was great. Uh, I learned a lot, and um, uh, kind of met a lot of amazing people there. Some some of them may may even be on this uh, kind of uh, kind of maybe on this call today. And um, uh, but back in January 2023, earlier this year, I decided to join the Great London Authority needed a change. And um, I joined up as the London Nature Recovery Officer. So I, within the GLA, I uh, work within the green infrastructure team um, who are kind of within the environment section. And uh, part of my key responsibility, I'm a specialist officer, um, is to produce the London Local Nature Recovery Strategy. And, and um, what I'll do is the first part of this um, talk is go through what that what that kind of is and the reasons why we've got there it's um it will be a bit policy e to start off with but i think it really gives the context in terms of how and why especially uh, we look from the national level right down to kind of to where we are regional and also what that means at the ground level as well so i'll move on um yeah just to give you a quick flick um this is our uh, kind of we always used to do stats kind of when i was back in redbridge and this is our uh, kind of my last um kind of like infographic in terms of what we did but i'm quite proud that you know kind of i was involved at a ground level uh, kind of at the ground level um working with a team of very very uh, you know amazing uh, amazing team amazing rangers hands on grassroots but we did you know kind of as well the team were kind of multidisciplinary we did do a lot of policy work as well we worked with uh, kind of borough officers in terms of doing the best we could for nature conservation for the borough um but yeah the work with the community volunteers young people um was really rewarding and as, as well working with some really um committed and um kind of very committed officers and uh yeah it was, it was a it was a great time and now with the gla uh, kind of it's a kind of a different story in terms of um, the type of work i'm doing obviously it's more policy but i'm still working with a great bunch of people as well who are very committed and and passionate about the about nature in in london so the background so to give you a rough background around nature recovery now um in particular local nature recovery strategies now they were introduced in the environment act 2021 so this 
um, the, kind of the concept behind this was to introduce a new system of spatial strategies that have been developed to um, essentially support the efforts across to recover nature across England. Um, I'll read I'll read out the bullet points and I'll kind of give you some context. Help planning authorities, um, local planning authorities, they call them. So within within the London context, there'll be the London boroughs and the City of London. Help plan, planning authorities incorporate nature recovery objectives, um, support the delivery of biodiversity net gain, um, which some of you might, I'm kind of touching on a little bit of that, but some of you might have questions at the at the end about that. That is a minefield, but we'll, we'll stick with nature recovery for the moment and also help deliver national environment targets as well. So that's part of the environment improvement plan that uh, kind of DEFRA released earlier this year. So essentially, this is about um, creating a standard that can be applied across England of regional strategies, regional strategies that can talk to each other essentially across boundaries. So I'll get a bit more into that as we go into the talk and how that works. So just to give you a bit of a background, um, regional kind of strategies in relation to nature conservation have existed before. So in terms of our history and background in London, we have um, kind of, if we look back to the past, um, kind of prior to the, probably prior to the GLA and probably even up towards the GLC era, with the Greater London Council, uh, we had the London Ecology Unit and um, I wasn't planning on putting these slides up here today, but I did because um, we the, kind of the, there was a bit of an office clear out uh, kind of on Tuesday and um, um, rummaging in some of the cupboards, um, these came out and uh, I was quick to kind of put them to one side to make sure they weren't uh, kind of they, they weren't in any danger of being thrown out. But these are kind of the the doc the kind of the booklets that were created many many years ago. Um, which put put in place the foundation, uh, which which built basically for nature conservation in London, which is the sites of importance for nature conservation uh, kind of sites, here, in which in London there's over six uh, one thousand six hundred in total. But yeah, we'll go into a bit more in detail about that around the mapping. So strategy, strategy, kind of regional strategies of it have existed in the past, and London's been at quite the forefront of that for quite some time, quite a few decades. So we've also um, kind of had the um, kind of BAPs as well. So um, London BAP, which was around uh, kind of around when I actually first started my career in the early 2000s. So um, that was the uh, kind of the national BAP, uh, national BAPs with the kind of London BAPs and also the kind of regional uh, kind of local BAPs as well, local BAPs and BAPs and HAPs and SAPs, or Habitat Action Plans and, and Species Action Plans too. Um, sorry, there's a lot of acronyms going around. I'll try not to use too many because it can get quite confusing. Um, so uh, when I first started my career, um, Habitat Action Plans and Species Action Plans were were the thing that we used to, that used to guide a lot of our work. And especially in Redbridge, it was kind of, when I started, it was one of the first tasks to help uh, kind of put together and write that and produce the Redbridge map, um, which was, I think, a really, really good document. Eventually, a lot of the the, the kind of BAPs, um, habitat action plans and species action plans, they, um, for Redbridge anyway, that was subsumed into what we call the Redbridge Environment Action Plan, which was, in some respects, it, it helped to combine it with other um, kind of environmental objectives and targets and goals that the council had to so to make them a little bit more kind of sinuous and combined and 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 together, which is which is a little bit the direction that the way things are going with regards to green infrastructure too. Anyway, I'll move on. Um, and uh, one one of the important things about that time as well was the London Biodiversity Partnership. Um, although the London Biodiversity Partnership at the time did um, kind of eventually just fall by the wayside, it, probably around kind of just after 2010, 20, 2011, I think. Um, main, the cause is generally due to kind of the funding drying up at, the, at around that time. Um, the London Biodiversity Partnership in particular, or kind of a biodiversity partnership for, for London is something that, you know, uh, as part of this process, we will be looking at again, just so that, you know, so I'm um, going back to Redbridge and we were talking about spatial strategies. What we mean by spatial strategies is our maps and kind of our biodiversity action plan at the time was based around a map, a uh, map of the borough 
detailing where are kind of specific areas in terms of um, kind of nature conservation value are, us, are what we call our sinks, the sites of importance for nature conservation. Very importantly, our corridors or green corridors, what links them together. So even though today we're talking about nature recovery networks and spatial strategies, they have existed in the past, um, but we're hoping this time around that there's a uniformity around the country in terms of how they're applied and also kind of a more joined up effort, especially between um, outs, you know, kind of with our kind of county neighbours, which is, um, you know, kind of something that we're developing very strongly with. So as we can see, going back to London, coming back to today, um, as we can see from London, London's, London is incredibly green. Um, as you can see from the map there, there's a lot of green, um, a lot of big open spaces, uh, especially in the outer London fringes as well. We can see there's a lot of blue too. So uh, in terms of London's green and blue infrastructure, we're really kind of quite rich for such a, you know, kind of a big city. And, you know, we have a uh, kind of planning policy to, you know, as well as um, a really strong and uh, kind of passionate um, uh, kind of groups of uh, ca campaigners and experts who've helped uh, helped us to retain a lot of that green space. So, yeah, uh, we need to in terms of the in terms of the future how we help to maintain that as well as in make sure that we have the ability to enhance it's connected um, because we also know that green good, kind of good quality green space good quality. Um, kind of water, water as well, uh, kind of waterways too um, are good for people for lots of different reasons. Um, so to give you an overview in terms of where, in terms of the national policy regulation guidance, I just thought I'd have this screen up here to give you just a bit of a flavor of how it works. So at the very top, um, in terms of uh, central government, we have the MPPF or the national um, kind of yeah national planning policy framework, and also we have the MPPG, which is national national planning national national planning policy um, guidance as well. Um, we then on the side on the left we have the Environment Act 2021. And through the Environment Act 2021, we have parachuted in a range of raft of other kind of environmental or kind of biodiversity focused uh, kind of strategies like the local nature recovery strategy, but also quite importantly, biodiversity net gain and also the enhanced um, biodiversity uh, duty, which which basically is the biodiversity reporting um, uh, kind of burden on, on local authorities. As well, um, there is the voluntary natural England green infrastructure framework as well, which sits um, kind of on the side of that too. Um, I've listed it there on the left, but it also, um, essentially it's a lot of the things that are on there actually are covered um, kind of really quite competently within the London plan, it, uh, ex you know, kind of with the existing London plan as well. So if we look through uh, along the sheet, we can see there that we've got the kind of what we have from central government and the next step down from that is those regional plans and what we have there is the London plan too. So in particular, the policies that we're quite interested in within the London plan is uh, the green infrastructure strategy, which is um, essentially at the moment, the all London green grid, as far as for, for London is concerned. And also we have the urban greening factor as well, which is uh, a system that we use, which, which complements um, mandatory biodiversity net gain. Both our metrics designed uh, kind of within within the planning system to help to uh, minimise kind of damage to um, kind of biodiversity value, but also to increase um, kind of the amount of green space that development provides as well. So we've got we've got those policies in place, and also we have Planet London Plan guidance as well, which helps with that too. So um, there's the All London Green Grid, there's the Urban Greening Factor, which we just talked about now, which there's uh, um, kind of documents and the um, kind of on the, on, on the GLA website, as well as um, tree and woodland strategies too. So um, all this feeds down and it provides a kind of a framework for the local plans to be produced, which are done borough by borough. So the, the, the trick here for us is how the local nature recovery strategy in particular fits into all of this and it fits in kind of sinuously so that it 
is it can be something that's not going to be a document that's going to end up sitting on its own on the shelf that no one looks at it. Um, our idea is to really incorporate it in very um, kind of it, try to incorporate it as, as, as tight as we can within our existing policies and framework to make sure that it, it is something that's going to be very useful. I think that's the key word here is useful and actually has some has some weight to it. Right. So if we go here, uh, kind of uh, just to go through what the main London plan strategies, uh, London plans and strat mail strategies and uh, plans and strategies we have. So there's the LES or the London Environment Strategy. There's the Mayor's Transport Strategy, and of course the London Plan itself. Um, kind of the, the bulk of uh, kind of the former London Biodiversity Strategy. The bulk of uh, kind of those policies now sit within the London Environment Strategy, um, which is tied in with the other environmental policies as well and likewise um, kind of this feeds into the London plan too so the idea of the LNRS um, is that we um, kind of are going to use this this process that has been set by DEFRA to create these um, kind of brand new nature recovery strategies to help build a, a kind of so yeah to help build a, a kind of a evidence base for the next next review of the London plan which is coming up very soon and also to fill in, you know, kind of the gaps we're looking at. And I, it was important for me to show you the, the slides of kind of the past work that was done before is I've really identified what, what really worked well. And I think partnership worked well in terms of that, that London, you know, kind of bringing London together in terms of working together, especially the nature conservation community. So that's an example of where we, we think the LNRS is going to be really useful to help deliver kind of real, 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 big nature conservation gain in London. So this is this kind of sl next slide here is quite useful from a kind of a context point of view in relation to how from a regional, from regional, from a London point of view, how our kind of strategies and documents kind of filter down and how they, how it basically works kind of regional and to local and to operational as well, which will also be local too. So our, our kind of take on the kind of current local nature recovery strategies, it sits within our suite of existing um, kind of green infrastructure type uh, kind of plans and strategies. So that'll be the All London Green Grid and the London Urban Forest Plan. We essentially want all three of those documents to talk to each other, um, so they complement. Um, so essentially the local nature recovery strategy, which we're developing at the moment, covers everything that's kind of nature-based. The green infrastructure strategy, the updated all London green grid covers, covers the rest that isn't covered on that. And also within kind of in terms of trees and uh, kind of like woodland creation, that's where the London Urban Forest Plan can mop up the rest. Um, that kind of helps, that helps from a kind of when we go down to the local level in terms of how that then can help structure those operational plans. So uh, we envisage, and it's something that we've recommended with with boroughs that um, most boroughs are, do are, do have their own or working on their own uh, kind of green infrastructure strategies. So that includes blue and green, uh, blue being water, and um, also working on those operational action plans. So uh, having their own local urban forest plan something you know a, a spatial, spatial you know kind of where 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 tree planting is going to be focused whether that's woodlands or new woodlands or um kind of their street tree planting and public realm planting um parks and open spaces which which most boroughs have and as well and this is the big one uh kind of our local nature recovery plan too which essentially is very similar to the um map or kind of the redbridge biodiversity action plan map i showed previously the redbridge map um, it's essentially a map with a map, um, but it's it's going to help direct. It's going to be the detail in terms of directing action on the ground, but underpinned and the, with a, given a strong foundation via what we're going to create in terms of the local nature recovery strategy. I'm hoping the, this slide's going to be the last one of strategies here because I think I'm sending myself to sleep talking about these, but they are important. Okay, so by law. The London uh, kind of local nature 
local nature recovery strategy has to include um, a statement of London's strategic biodiversity priorities and also fully a fully updated and comprehensive map of London's strategic nature recovery network. So in some respects, and I'm going to go through those, some of those slides in a, in a moment, um, the mapping is uh, quite a lot of it is already complete in terms of our sync system. Um, what we have to kind of work out and what we will be very interesting to work out is how we join those up and where the opportunities are for, to expand that system. Um, the sync system or the sites of importance of nature conservation in London um, are kind of collection of over 1,600 um, sites that have been designated for their importance for, for wildlife in London or the bedrock foundation of nature conservation in London for, for decades. And we want to make sure that we maintain that, but also we maintain the quality of that status as well. Uh, so how we merge the two together is going to be kind of really key. And London's strategic biodiversity priorities and how we work that out over the next two years is going to be very, very useful as well. And it's something that um, I'm sure there'll be lots of conversations about. But being a statutory document, as the nature, local nature recovery strategies are, it gives us some good, really good opportunities. So essentially, the London biodiversity strategy, um, uh, the local nature recovery strategy is the London biodiversity strategy 2.0. So we're filling in the void left from the uh, kind of regional BAP system that has um, kind of uh, essentially been subsumed into other things. But we have the chance now to kind of put it back, put something back in place that also is, is kind of, as I said, speaks to, you know, kind of around the country. Um, we really want to focus on strengthening our evidence base for the next London plan and London environment strategy, um, uh, as also str strengthening how we collect our data, monitor, and um, create a um, kind of really have an enforced standard in terms of how it is um, provided and submitted. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the work that we do um, across the board and, you know, being the, obviously the, the group that I'm talking about here, the London Natural History Society terms of you know kind of recording it's a it's a really important thing um as well as how we how we he, grapple with how we record um habitat change in particular which is spatially which is not not easy uh, i think species data wise we do very well um a lot better than some other places i have to say and um but it's 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 habitat change it's it's quite tricky to to monitor and that we're going to be working with that and working with many partners including lnhs over the next two years to kind of try and grapple with that um we want to also strengthen the way we engage with communities and address environmental justice so um not everyone has access to um nature uh, so we have a great measure that we use here in London, which is the area of areas of deficiency for access to nature and that met that kind of system or that calculation is driven by um, the distance uh, you are, for instance, one kilometer, I believe, from a, um, a sink, a site of importance for nature conservation that has been designated um, either borough or metropolitan level. So um, yeah, there's there's essentially four four levels, uh, kind of all four, four um, kind of stages that um, kind of a sink can be designated to. Local is the, the, the lowest, and we have usually two steps with boroughs. So it's borough grade one, borough grade two. Then we have metropolitan, which is the gold standard. Um, so to, you know, the more borough metropolitan graded sites that you have either in your borough or we have in London, the less areas of deficiency or the less areas of kind of, you know, kind of um, clear spaces that we have on the map. So, um, which I'll sh I'll, I've got an image of that of London to show you, um, which will be one of our measures, I think, and kind of one of our biodiversity priorities to help um, kind of uh, improve on, certainly, because not only um, the more borough met, met graded sites that we have in London, uh, kind of the, the, the less kind of area, the, the less area deficiency we have. And I think that's better for everyone, but it's, it's not easy, but we, we'll, we'll certainly find that we'll kind of have some tactics to, to work that one out. Um, we want to support and protect areas not designated as sites of important uh, as sites of importance for nature conservation as well. Um, and um, we have this opportunity as well, secondary via the nature recovery network system. So 
where we haven't we where a site may not meet the grade within the designation system it could still uh, as an opportunity strategic opportunity area it may still be it may it may be very well important or have the opportunity in the future with the correct management to get to that grade and with the nature recovery networks that we're looking to map across london we hope that that it will give those sites a little bit more protection um and also uh, with biodiversity net gain you hope think the local nature recovery strategies will provide that strategic guide and also um give a kind of like a, a, a guide in terms of future landscape recovery too. Um, very and kind of the, the top thing here is around connecting London wide nature delivery initiatives programs together. I think this is really important. Sorry, more acronyms there saying so it's just suitable alternative nat natural green space that impacts or kind of affects uh, kind of areas that are close to um, uh, kind of SACs or SPAs um, kind of which are Kind of nationally designated spaces um so that's a, a tariff that that is used um kind of on developers uh if they're close to um kind of one of those uh kind of sites and um it's it's paid in essentially to uplift or, pr or kind of improve uh, natural spaces uh, surrounding that those those designated spaces to encourage people to go there rather than to go in kind of go in those designated spaces if that makes sense but apart from that we've got you know kind of our, our, our kind of programs in, in terms of rewilding uh, river restoration woodland creation and um, climate adaptation which I've, I've kind of focused a little bit on on this slide deck today and LNRS is about joining all that together um, it's getting those kind of like various different programs as initiatives to speak because that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna create our nature nature networks not only in london but i think across the country as well i think you know kind of that's that's where you know kind of you have to be pragmatic that's where sometimes the funding lies but also we want to make sure that these initiatives are appropriate for the areas they're in um you know saying you don't want to cut your nose to spite your face and that's that's exactly the same here we want to make sure that you know the for example with woodland creation it's the right tree in the right place um, it's appropriate as well. And um, likewise, with climate adaptation, there's great opportunities there. But, um, kind of, but we've targeted climate adaptation and, you know, making sure that those landscape plans are appropriate as well. We've got some really, really good opportunities indeed. So this is this is an important thing. There's only a few points here, but um, I just wanted to make it clear that um, the LRS is this boroughs do have to carry out um, reviews of their sinks and uh, the LRS doesn't replace that. Um, certainly um, kind of the LRS can help kind of guide boroughs in terms of especially new opportunity areas um, where where they feel there could potentially be for new sites of importance for nature conservation when they carry out their reviews but a lot of um, it's certainly no uh, that it's certainly not not an excuse to not carry one out if um, if there needs to be one especially if you have a local if especially if there's a local plan review on the cards we already have um, I I chair the London Wildlife Sites Board which is the board that um, essentially oversees the the borough sink reviews that come in for um, oversight and um, we've already had you know, you know kind of three this year and we're probably down to have another two or three before the end of the year as well for boroughs. So it's some kind of the flow is still still healthy. And we encourage encourage that to come in because that all helps. Um, it's a strategy. It's not an implementation or action plan. Uh, the action plans happen for locally further down the line. What it does do is provide that foundation. Um, and it doesn't unfortunately directly provide funding for delivery. Well, we hope it will do and um, going back to the those kind of programs and initiatives that are currently running especially especially some of the mayor's programs that are currently there uh, the rewild rewild london um it's about joining that up together so there will be some hopefully some delivery mechanisms to help deliver improvements to our sites of nature sites of importance for nature conservation right so London, I was talking a little bit before about our areas of deficiency and access to nature in Greater London, um, as well as our sinks. So this map here that's in front of you now has got uh, a uh, kind of kindly supplied by uh, kind of our part partners, uh, Green Space Information of Greater London. Give a big shout for them. They are the um, 
the local environmental record center for London. And um, all, basically most of our species data and habitat data is stored there, including our designated sites and particular sink data. And um, the area, def area areas of deficiency in access to nature is one of their own data sets, which they run, which gives us a gauge in terms of uh, kind of where where their gaps, where we need to address gaps in relation to the quality of nature conservation sites in London. Um, as you can see there, there's there's a lot of um, dark purple there, and um, it's something that I think is very important that we can look to address as part of this nature recovery process. Um, but also, I mean, look if you look at the kind of the kind of that coloured tiles or the um, kind of like the the red orange. Uh, kind of yellow tiles there those are indica indicators of where our sites of importance for nature conservation are you see there's still quite a lot of them uh, even in this even around the center of even around the center of london as well in in a london there's some great green spaces um I've, I've been a londoner all my life and you know i've always surprised by the the number of you know amazing spaces that you can find um even where our offices are based in southwark uh kind of there there are some really spectacular small spaces that exist but not only it's the spaces but it's the people behind them as well that help keep them that, that have helped protect them help make them what they are so as a as a measure i think this is something that's that that is a good foundation to really build on so if you're not aware of it in particular i think this is something yeah to be aware of and um and uh, can certainly be used as a as a um uh, kind of a good a good way of uh, kind of reporting back in terms of the quality of of nature nature space. So I'm a, I'm a great believer that people should have access to good quality um, green space, but also good quality um, kind of nature conservation space as well. And good quality nature conservation space is is managed in some shape or form. Um, not always, but you know, kind of it it there is some management there. That, that helps improve that quality. Mm. So at the local level, um, as I said before, we, what we want is to guide and support the preparation of those future local plans and borough level nature recovery action plans. Another great map from Giggle, this showcases London's ecological network, currently working on the, the data that they have. Um, as part of the process, we're gonna be kind of looking at those data sets and bringing in some more data sets as well to help improve the quality of that mapping. And um, hope that'll be a good foundation for kind of especially selecting kind of new opportunity areas or co connection areas for the nature recovery strategy, especially str those big landscape scale strategic sites. And some places have already started already. So if we look here within the um, uh, kind of uh, with our friends over at Hackney, uh, kind of recently they went through a kind of local plan review they went through their sync review process and they've created their own um local nature recovery action plan and um as part of that they've done a, a kind of a kind of a trial you know put in their first round of mapping in terms of creating their yeah kind of their nature recovery networks um so it's happening and it's something that we're encouraging boroughs to to look into as their next steps so um yeah, working with our colleagues in Giggle, we're doing a lot in uh, in relation to um, identifying our core gaps in data, data flow, and policy. Um, yeah, sorry, these these little bits and pieces here are quite uh, kind of. I won't go through it all because it'll take forever. But um, importantly, we've got this biodiversity evidence, better outcomes from planning, and one of the things that we do want to improve on is the um, the uptake in terms of um, good data being used to. Um, uh to guide planning planning applications in particular um the uptake across london is is very low i think it's i think it's one or two percent of applications actually um are submitted with a with a giggle um kind of data search which is which is not good um we really want that over 10 or or you know sorry over 15 percent um to make that work so that's uh kind of a big strategic biodiversity priority for london i would say um and at the moment, there's lots of trials going on in terms of, um, I mean, biodiversity net gain, obviously, and kind of habitat, uh, kind of distinctiveness and 
you know, kind of classification, we're moving over to something called UK HABS, it's a kind of habitat classification code or methodology. So um, the date, there's a lot of work going on those data sets to convert um, those things so they're, they're fit for purpose for when we need them for that, for those mapping phases. So um, just, just to kind of round us off, hopefully this should only take us five minutes because I want to make sure we've got time for questions at the end. Just a few things that have been happening in the past, uh, over the over the past couple of years in terms of uh, kind of you know kind of good things in terms of nature recovery and uh, kind of landscape scale uh, kind of nature conservation work. So one of these is um, something that was funded from the Mayor's uh, Mayor of London's Rewild Island Fund that was in 2022 uh, along the River Rum um, with our good friends over at the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham. And, and yeah, it was a, a kind of a, a great project that involved breaking, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, but kind of making a break in the um, uh, kind of in the bank to kind of reconnect the river with its floodplains. So when the river is in kind of high flood, it can actually spill out and spread within this area here, this kind of wetland system. And um, they've got, you know, about three interconnected wetlands there. And in high flows, they fill up. Uh, and when it, when the water recedes, um, kind of they essentially hold hold bits of water as well. So um, they're great spaces for kind of amphibians and um, and birds too. So it it's it's amazing what's what's happening out there in London. So as part of and you know kind of part of this part of their scheme as well as kind of in terms of that delivery mechanism, uh, rewild. The Rewild London scheme is has been kind of pretty brilliant in terms of providing all important cash funding, and um, that's what really matters. If we want to, if we were actually kind of serious about this, we need to put put money towards actually doing work on the ground. And we are go, going to go through uh, another round of of um, kind of. There's going to be new Rewild London. I need we're going to be coming out to Rewild London free, um, kind of this this autumn. So that will be open soon. So do keep an eye out if you're um, kind of if you're interested in in that sort of funding. There's kind of some uh, big money available for um, some you know kind of significant schemes. And as you can see there, there's been some great stuff that's been going on. Um, we've had beaver re reintroductions. We've got uh, kind of work um, to kind of with the shrill carder bee, which is kind of quite which is an amazing kind of sighting to have for London and. Um, Lots of kind of also monitoring work and uh, kind of survey work because to water voles and other improvements are going on in London. So in, in total, our kind of plans and how we're going to uh, kind of um, uh, kind of synchronise with the LRS is uh, kind of with with the real world scheme is looking at the the eleven opportunity zones that have been identified within. Within that, um, I do recommend you read the report, and what I might do, what I'll do is send a, a link so you can access it if you haven't read it before. Um, but we're looking, you know, kind of quite substantial, over 100 hectares of uh, kind of space to be rewilded, um, and you know, as well as that, but not only the big big sites, but always looking to create that network of stepping stones. And um, importantly, number three is create opportunities for Londoners to engage rewilding, but nature conservation in general. Um, we really want to outreach and you know kind of reach out to hard to reach groups as well because we know that nature can benefit people as much as that's you know, for nature as well right I'll quickly talking about adaptation and um some of the work that um kind of uh since i've started i've been kind of not necessarily involved with but i've you know kind of had visits with and seen um we've had a great example over at london borough of enfield um some work that they did on uh kind of furs farm if some of you might be aware of it who live in the air who kind of live in that borough or in the area um there was kind of a recreation ground playing fields that uh essentially that had a, a stream running underneath it and the stream was uncovered they created these large wetlands um, which obviously improved the biodiversity value of that site no end. But importantly, what they were also considering was how they linked that with the park down here, Pims Park. And the way they decided to kind of they focused on that, and it was a very interesting concept, is following the underground culverted stream that runs between the two, um, kind of under these houses here. So looking at um, a, a Kind of a, a network connection of what we call rain gardens and kind of tree sub pits. So uh, let me just click to the next screen here. And this is how it's done. 
so this is a really interesting concept and one around kind of climate adaptation so instead of water running directly straight into the kind of uh, the gullies they they run into these green spaces which, which are purposely created they're dug in so they're a little bit lower they hold the water they allow water to kind of in, you know kind of a bulk of water to infiltrate into the ground before um and before before being allowed before the water being allowed to kind of go into the drain back into the system so it doesn't it's not going to um it's not going to solve the kind of solutions uh, it totally solve the problems we have with surface water but it is helping quite a lot it, may, it means that a we we get these areas you know kind of we, we get the opportunity to green certain areas but also with trees as well and tree planting i think um having the kind of tree sub pits in particular are really are really interesting i always look at new trees that are planted and i think they look quite sad especially after a, a summer down downfall of rain um they don't actually collect that much water because the water's running in the in the gully underneath it but if there's a way of actually kind of dropping that dropping that tree pit lower so it actually captures that water before it then move before that pit becomes formed and it moves on to the next the next um kind of tree pit or kind of rain garden itself wouldn't that be smart these are just smart kind of uh, interesting concepts that have been worked on at the moment that i'm really really keen to kind of develop and where especially in urban areas where space is limited i think there's a, a really good opportunity to link our sink sites in particular with these green chains these green corridors so thamesmead is a site that we've been working on quite a lot and uh, kind of through the clever cities program so my colleagues have been doing some great work there some great landscaping um lots of green space in thamesmead uh, which is in south east south east london and um again working on this rain garden concept and uh, kind of looking at making some significant improvements on some of the kind of features they have here. This is some great work that's been done on South Mere Lake. Um, this is an example of a sub that's uh, kind of was created in Barking Riverside as well. Again, climate adaptation work that can really uh, aid and assist um, kind of with with nature conservation. And yeah, in terms of raising awareness for nature and seeking views on the strategy, um, we're, we're going to go through quite a process of that, and uh, hopefully. Maybe next year I could give certainly give you a, a bit more update, or you might even be involved with it at that time uh, as we're developing how we're going to do that. But I thought I'd give you a quick overview of something that um, recently the Natural History Museum have been working on, which is the Urban Nature Network. So it's a platform which I hope they're kind of gearing towards um, kind of amateur recorders, um, not only in London but throughout the country, um, to kind of share ideas, um, kind of. Um, kind of to post their events and to kind of connect a variety of organizations together. Um, so um, it's a very, very much in its infancy at the moment, um, but it's it's a very interesting concept and one that we're looking to kind of support. Uh, it's one of many things that we're looking to support and hopefully develop um, because that we, we know the kind of of course, the, the kind of recording community are going to be very, very, very important as part of this. But not only the existing recording community, we want to make sure that there's opportunities for um, to help the recording community as well, kind of um, kind of work with um, kind of new recorders that are kind of showing interest that are looking to to kind of take part in take part in it as well. There's lots of Londoners that are there, I'm sure, are very interested in, in observing and looking at nature. So it's a great platform. Um, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of, um, uh, I don't think it's quite ready yet for kind of like uh, the public, but it's very soon it will be. But certainly, hopefully, um, under the Natural History Society, um, uh, kind of will at some point get a message from, uh, kind of, we'll, we'll have, we'll be able to have a presentation from these guys to give you a bit more information. It's a great thing. So, yeah. A uh, few things, we're still waiting uh, further work from uh, further stuff from Natural England in terms of our secondary legislation for the LNRS. I'll skip through that because that's, yeah, that's just stuff we have to deal with. And also um, in terms of our local environment record center and our kind of borough partners, we um, have uh, kind of essentially most of London is signed up. We've got 30, 30, 30 of the local authorities boroughs are all kind of giggle uh, kind of SLA partners or service level agreement partners. And um, we just we just need the the other three to help. Although, well, Croydon, we're, we're, we're kind of a little bit, we'll, we'll probably need to help them out a bit. But yeah, we're, we're getting there slowly but surely. So hopefully you guys 
found that interesting. It's a real whistle stop tool. There's so much to take on board. There's a lot of jargon acronyms there. Um, but the the main takeaway point is around the foundation that we want to um, kind of put in place to help deliver this stuff. Uh, kind of make sure the nature remains, you know, kind of remains on the agenda. That it's not forgotten about. Um, reviews take place. They need to take place every now and again because there's always new things, new technologies to take advantage of. Um, so I hope that gave you a bit of a snapshot. And um, yeah, I look forward to um, seeing your questions. I better stop there. Thank you. That's great, Francis. I'll just ask you to stop sharing your screen when you're ready. Um, thank you so much for the, giving us a really helpful overview of all the kind of different levels of thinking that needs to go into this, because there's obviously needing to be the connection between the kind of top level, feeding all the way down to making sure these, these things are kind of happening borough-wide, but also the coordination across London is really important, because all you have, you have these separate boroughs, we're all part of this, and I did like the way you kind of emphasised how green and blue the city actually is. That, that kind of image, when you look at it from above, it's incredible, really, for such a major capital city. Um, we, we have a lot of questions, including some people who kind of want, there's some quite detailed questions about particular sort of points, and there's some more general things. So I think if we go straight over to you, Anka, and we start with questions. I don't know if we'll get through them all, but let's see how many we can manage to tackle. Right. So, there, yeah, there's some questions and also some kind of comments, which I might throw at you later after the questions to see um, how you respond to them. Um, but the first question is from Chris. And he says, as you know, Francis, London Borough of Redbridge has not reviewed, surveyed or upgraded, downgraded its sinks for 26 or 27 years. If other boroughs are in the same position, then does this not severely compromise the data being collected by Giggle for processing? And shouldn't the boroughs be advised to upgrade all data prior to GLA LNR going live? <laughs> Acronyms again. Yeah, that's a in, yeah interesting question. Yeah, that's a good question to ask. Um, so, yeah, the LRS. Uh, you know, we, we always uh, kind of it's within within the London plan and the London environment strategy, there's kind of guidance and recommendations with regards to um, kind of boroughs making sure that they're, you know, kind of the various their various reviews plans are, are kind of kept up to date, especially with especially with sinks as well. There's a recommendation that they should be reviewed on a regular basis. Um, however, the, the, the borough uh, ultimately makes that call. Um, we can encourage and certainly push push towards that, but um, especially with a local plan review, if um, if the inspector decides that it's good enough, then there's not a lot we can do. However, um, it is, yeah, we do recommend highly that if it will have to be diplomatic, of course, um, that you know, kind of, um, the, you know, uh, kind of sinks are reviewed in place. In terms of how it affects the quality of the um, LNRS, um, for, from a strategic point of view, we're looking at kind of boundaries, basically, in terms of the where the sinks are. Um, yeah, uh, kind of potentially, could there be, for example, in that particular borough, could there be more sinks, possibly, or could they be expanded, maybe? for sure but in terms of the um kind of the circles on maps in terms of the the flow in terms of the corridors etc that link link between those sites there those sites are already kind of if you like they're they're there they're, lo they're locked in they're not going anywhere um in that circumstance what what might happen is because through the mapping and you know opportunity areas that could come through the lrs process they might that for in that example, they might end up with a, a very, very large review. Well, they probably well, if it, haven't, it hasn't been done in a while, so it will be a large review. It'll be a large review in terms of there are lots and lots of new sites. So it depends, you know, if you want to be smart about it, it's probably sensible to control the narrative and actually do it now. But yeah, there's lots of there's there's lots of connotations to do it. We're there, we're there for guidance. Obviously, Redbridge, if if they are, if they're keen to kind of seek our guidance in terms of the way forward, we're we're always the doors always open for that with us. And we do understand that there are there are pressures that local authorities face. So we're not going to be we're not going to uh we're not going to kind of wield a stick. 
um, so to speak. The fact is we don't have a stick to wield. So, yeah. Hope, hope. So I, we, I don't think, I don't think that, I don't think that's ans I'm sorry, Maria. Yeah, it just it is a lot of it is about trying to encourage and persuade yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. And um, we want to work with London Bar of Redbridge to kind of make sure that, you know, kind of they, it's work with them to, along this process. Anka, you, I think you're muted. I am muted. Sorry about that. I was just to say there are a few comments about people's um, various um, count, uh, councils that are not, they don't seem to be doing much of anything, including Hillingdon, um, <laughs> which I used to live there. So I, I, I sympathize there. Um, so another question is from Priscilla. Do you think that councillors will change um, their attitude towards green space? And then she kind of points out her, hers, um, I'm thinking of Bow Common Gas Works development. So in terms of individual kind of councillors, um, it's it's hard to gauge, especially, you know, kind of, um, obviously I don't know that particular situation or ex that example, but in terms of generally, um, what I have seen throughout, especially, well, probably within the echo chamber of our sector anyway, that um, the level of coordination and um, interest has, has really galvanized the sector, not only with our um, kind of core supporters, but um, the organizations that have been kind of disparate and doing their own little things here and there, we're all coming together. And I'm thinking that, I, and to be honest, I think that started to get the interest of politicians as well. I'm seeing a lot more politicians inquiries coming through and um, interest to support residents on that. At the end of the day, I mean, yeah, the you know, as as kind of everyone here is, as taxpayers in a democracy, it's very, very important that, you know, kind of you do you do contact your 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 local councillor, your, your member to kind of make your concerns um, felt and especially if you can get people together to um, kind of put those uh, those concerns or even to say that we've got a great opportunity here to do something that's going to be amazing for the community there's lots of examples where uh greeting for example and um projects for nature conservation small scale community scale stuff has a real benefit to the kind of the the way the way people kind of like live together you know kind of within the community where, where how they appreciate the space so it's within their within their interests to do that so yeah i'd suggest you know kind of make sure they make that contact but maybe you know kind of i guess carrot stick you know yes um if you're if you're displeased you, you've got you know, that's your um constitutional right but also um yeah um talk about those opportunities as well well sort of related to that then um phil was wondering what proportion of local authorities have actually submitted a recovery plan and what is the deadline or is there one so um local authorities don't have well, the um, the statutory uh, kind of in terms of the nature recovery strategies, it's, I should have I should have made that made that clear at the start. So uh, the the Greater London Authority, the GLA, are the responsible authority for the region to create a overarching strategy. We're the ones who have the deadline essentially, and we have to get it done um, by I think it's like April twenty twenty five. So um, in terms of the other boroughs, in, in terms of there, there is no set deadline when they have to produce a nature recovery action plan themselves. Um, some actually are, are kind of have produced plans, but they're, they're just sticking with their biodiversity action plans, which is fine. As long as they're spatial, I mean, it does the same thing, essentially. But um, the onus is um, kind of from a statutory point of view, it's on on us, the GLA, to produce that strategy to guide, to help guide and steer the other kind of our 33 boroughs to to create those plans together. Sorry, I, I should have mentioned that at the start. That was a key thing. Well, there's another question from Gabriel, which might be kind of related to this because yeah. he said, you know, you um you said boroughs should have um a biodiversity action plan. In Waltham Forest, the updated plan seems to be delayed and delayed. Is there any legal requirement here? There is, um, in terms of a, uh, they have to show kind of like due regard within uh, kind of their, so yeah, 
there's kind of an enhanced there's a duty for uh kind of nature conservation that all local authorities have to um kind of put in place um and um it's usually it kind of unfortunately it's a bit weak it's kind of due regard i mean there's there's a um kind of a, a little bit you know what does that mean but um a lot of a lot of boroughs they um kind of when they put their local plans together and they put their nature conservation especially when they're talking about their sites of importance for nature conservation they they you know they, can they use their kind of like green infrastructure strategies and other and other kind of or they they put them within environmental strategies or their climate change plans to um kind of to kind of meld together their their kind of biodiversity action um, I can't really, I'm, I'm not sure about the uh, exact details with regards to Wolfram Forest, but like with Redbridge, we'd encourage them to to really think about, especially now with the na local nature recovery strategy coming coming up, which we're developing, it's it be within their interests to kind of start thinking about doing that now, for sure. But in terms of a legal duty, it, it, depend, it depends what the inspector says <laughs> when it goes to local plan review. We're sort of running out of time, but I don't know if you want to pick up this. There's come the point about the railways. There's a couple of questions yeah, about was, that anchor. Is it worth? Yeah, um, because there was some interest in kind of the green corridors. Um, and Phil yeah. was wondering, um, he said, you know, railways seem useful for corridors in London, but are these being used? So in terms of nature, um... Yeah, I think for the 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 green corridors. Green corridors, so it's, it is interesting because a quite a lot of the rail network is um, quite a big portion of it is designated as uh, uh, for for their green corridor kind of function actually. So as sites of importance for nature conservation. So certainly in, it's certainly worthwhile um, uh, kind of visiting the the giggle. So giggles website. Um, Green Space Information from Greater London, they've got a um, uh, kind of like a map portal where you can actually search for um, where your where your local sites of importance for nature conservation is within your area. So it's worthwhile looking at that. But a lot of those railway sites are. Um, and there are, I, I will admit, you know, kind of their yeah, railway line sites in particular are subject to um, kind of operations um, because of for lots of different factors in terms of bank stability and um, and safety. Uh, which um, which we're kind of working with. Uh, we've got in particular um, with with TFL. TFL are a, a part of the GLA family. Um, we're kind of looking to work with them a little bit closely, and their grounds and the, essentially their operations team in, in work looking at ways we can um, kind of make the you know kind of the TFL network be a lot more be a lot more better for nature conservation. Just just it just relies on on kind of rather than um leaving it for a long period of time then blasting it it's kind of like management bits and pieces i think that's the that's the kind of like um that's the kind of where where we want we want it to lead to but of course it's it's sensitive it's you know it's all down to cost um but there's definitely a way to do that but yeah ne uh, rail networks are incredibly important so I think we'll probably have to wrap it up there, but I'm conscious there's a few there's comments and uh, kind of questions that we've we've had to leave aside. Is is it possible for people to contact you or your department through the GLA if there's kind of things that people want to follow up? Is there some kind of you know just a way of flagging up a few things and asking a few more questions? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I I'm happy for my email address to be um kind of passed around it's uh, kind of it or left it on my on the on the end of the slide deck if anyone's interested so and i don't know if the comments section if um if it's still open um after the meetings close i can certainly try and see if i can or maybe if there's a few choice ones that um, yeah we could pick, we can pick them up and email them to you perhaps yeah so if that see if I work can't. and then if, if, if you can follow up and then if, yeah and then people things that haven't occurred to people already i'm sure they'll go away and think more things um yeah. then maybe you know just the kind of route to to pass those things on to you because this you know it's obviously there's a lot of interest in debate that and to kind of involve people in that and increase the kind of level of discussion that seems to me to be a good thing so mm. um this kind of you know this network where we all see as LNHS, but also people with their local kind of what they're doing in their local communities, connecting all this together seems yeah. to be really important in terms of, you know, kind of making this this work. 
big time and it'll be very um i'll be more than delighted to you know kind of yeah speak to people as part of my job so i kind of miss it from back in my rubbish days so yeah well i say that now yeah. i might regret that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the tsunami yeah, yeah the tsunami <laughs> but um hopefully a lot of these questions okay. are will be fairly swift to answer but yeah, yeah. good stuff that's great so just to thank you once again for your time 